So in today's video, I'm going to be talking about 1SHV LiPos, 2SHV LiPos, 3SHV LiPos, and even some dead revived HV LiPos, and how did they hold up after being revived for being dead for so long. And there's some pretty interesting results here that I got. So I picked up this electronic load before I left the China. I could do custom profiles. I could monitor everything. This goes up to 20 amps, so it's absolutely phenomenal. I'll have it linked down below if you want to go ahead and try it out. So the idea here is to test these 1S, 2S, and 3S HV LiPos because I am in love with the toothpick class. Now, if you haven't had the chance to try a toothpick, just make sure your next micro is going to be some sort of a toothpick. And I am not kidding when I say that. I've had a couple friends that just came over from Australia, a guy named Tony FPV. Many of you have probably seen him on Discord, UAV Features Discord. He's also with me quite a lot. Him and his cousin came over. They're pretty proficient flyers. And um, if you've been watching my Instagram, you got to actually see them test it. It was the first time flying a toothpick. They were amazed that two cheap 1S batteries can do and how long you can fly for, how quiet it is and how powerful it is. They, they, they just couldn't believe it. Not only that, the propellers are super cheap. 20 bucks, you get 84 propellers. It's insane. You have a bag full of propellers that'll last you a really long time for 20 bucks. Batteries are absolutely cheap, but I really wanted to start testing these in order for us to know which is good and which is bad. So this is why I decided to take this challenge on. So there's something also that I've done with, with this one here. It was a dead 2S. I revived it, charged it, and tested it. And it also had another one that wasn't dead. And I've tested it as well. And it, it's quite... Uh, um, remarkable or interesting the findings that I found and for example what I've done today is basically I've tested all these cheap 1s lipos they're not new I'm working with Banggood to for them to send me some bunch of batteries to test out uh, new ones so these are just been used for quite a while now and it's kind of a really nice reference to get an idea how they're still holding their charge and they have been abused now the way that I've tested these is I would put two 1s of the same brand into this adapter here, which I'll have everything here linked down below because I, I could have swore that I got six to seven minutes of flight time on this. And I was absolutely right. And you'll get to see that in a bit. So this is the way I tested. I tested the Eishin 300 milliamp. I'll have all the batteries I tested down below. Obviously you checking those out greatly supports the channel. And I also tested these URUAV 250 milliamp HVs. Again, I put them together, tested them as a 2S because I am testing in terms of the toothpick class here. And I've also gotten some other ones and I'll have all of them linked down below, which we're going to cover in the Excel sheet. However, there was something really, really interesting. I actually basically got double the flight time with two of these. Now, I've never tried flying two of these. Obviously, they're a lot bigger and a lot heavier than a normal 2S. However, this has slightly more milliamps and it's one gram heavier than a 3S. So I'll be testing this out tomorrow to see because I couldn't find these. I just found them today. I've been looking for them all over the place. So I want to test these guys together on a toothpick and see what kind of flight time we get. Today's test is not the definitive test how everything will be tested. This was just me looking over my flight footage and coming up with an average for 2S flight time average amp draw and um, just kind of like a very cruise efficient, not super crazy flight and to see what we get. So enough talking, let's take a look at the charts. So right now we're taking a look at three batteries. I've tested five, which I'll bring in in a bit, but first let's understand how this chart is working. On the right here is the voltage, which is a full charge 8.7 volts because these are HVs. So 4.35 times two, which is 8.7. And it drops all the way to 6.8 volts. That's zero. That's what I've said as zero volts. On the right side, we see the current draw. Now the current draw does not exceed 2.5 amps currently because this is just kind of an average of what I usually fly if I'm just cruising. This is not a power hungry flight. So I just wanted to get an idea and put this into some numbers and see some differences. This is just a precursor into what's gonna happen to the channel. It starts off with pulling 1.8 amps. Now these blue lines here is pulling 1.8 amps for one minute. Then here it pulls 2.5 amps for one minute. And then the rest are 1.8 amps. This is kind of a very cruise efficient flight that I usually do to warm up or just enjoy myself without taking the risk of actually breaking the toothpick. So here we've tested the Eishin 300 milliamp 
uh, one SHV that I've connected together through that adapter, which is again linked down below, and also tested the URUAV 250 milliamp 1SHV linked together with the adapter and the URUAV 300 milliamps. So here we see we all they all start with a full battery and then they immediately start sagging to around 8.2 volts because right now what's going on when it first starts, it's already pulling 1.8 amps constant. So we can see the battery just drain out, drain out. And when my load tester changes its amp draw, it kind of cuts off for two seconds. And then that's why you see another a spike of voltage. So, you know, it just comes, rests up a little bit and then it picks up again and you can see the voltage drop. That's what's going on here. I'll see if I can figure something else out into this. But again, this is not the most expensive comp equipment and I can't afford any, any anything more expensive than that. This is the best as I can get right now. But it's really great. I mean, it's giving us really valuable information here. Hopefully someday I'll be able to step up if you guys contribute. That'd be awesome. So what we can see on the Eoshin 300 milliamps here, which is the yellow line, we can see it stayed you know, to around 8 minutes and a half, 8 minutes and 21 seconds around this area right here. Here. So 8 minutes and actually 29 seconds. Now the URUAV 250 milliamp 1SHV is obviously connected in series. We can see they lasted about 7 minutes and 17 seconds and it is pretty consistent. There's slight variations of plus minus 5 to 7 seconds. So uh, this is a pretty consistent, it seems like they're all from the same manufacturer here. And here we have the 2S URUAV 300 milliamps. Sorry, this is an official 2S. This is the URUAV. This one has been abused quite a lot. However, this is not the one that died or the one that I killed. And as you can tell, it performed the worst. But then again, to be honest, it didn't have as much use as these 1S HVs. And basically, this thing had like 15 cycles in it. However, the dead one is, is a completely different use case here. Now, if we enable the other ones. All right, so here I've enabled two more batteries that I tested, which are the uh, 450 milliamp UR UAVs. When I connected them in, they're basically 1Ss. So I've been connected them together to make a 2S. But we want to take a look at now the dead 2S UR UAV. So, which is this pinkish line right here. As you can tell, it performed better than the one that has been abused and uh, this was a dead battery for for about a month or so I never even touched it. I thought that's it it was dead I was like you know what I'm gonna try to revive it now and test it and as you can tell the dead one that I revived got around seven minutes and nine seconds of theoretical flight time I'll perfect this as time goes on but this kind of gives us an idea again just to just to get me you know warmed up into this type of testing because I'll be testing a lot of toothpick components this is one of the things and I also want to get your feedback so make sure this is very important now there's something really 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 interesting which is the 450 milliamp URUAV 1S's look at the flight time it's above 12 minutes. I had to cut it out. So I'm getting possibly more than double the flight time here. But then again, it is a little bit, it's heavy as a 3SHV, but at the same time, it has more milliamps. It has 150 more milliamps than a 300 milliamp uh, 3SHV. I haven't done any real world flight with this, but I will be flying it tomorrow definitely to test this out in the real world and i think it's going to be pretty interesting now if anyone has these batteries and has a toothpick go test it out come back and report and let me know because i'm really curious to see how that's going to perform and again it's just one gram heavier than a 3s hv um i don't know how it's going to perform i haven't tested the 3s just yet because i think it might be a bit too much data in one video and i didn't want to make this as long a long video but hopefully this is kind of making sense here we have the time on the bottom the current draw which is pretty you know static here and um they held out pretty great and the batteries never come down hot with the toothpicks uh, unlike the tiny hawk the tiny hawk the new one and the old one they suck so much current they're not efficient at all compared to a toothpick it's like it's just not efficient at all i can't even explain it uh toothpick just outdoes anything in terms of efficiency performance quietness and just about everything it's actually more quiet than a tiny hawk which is quite surprising so this is a i don't know what you want to call it kind of test but i thought this was pretty interesting i wanted to share my results with you guys i'll be doing more research more than reviews it's going to be more of a research into this and to get the perfect setup uh just because i myself i'm very intrigued and obsessed with this because it's just so portable and it's just an amazing thing that's happened to the community and i do highly recommend you go and try out a toothpick 
Now I recommend you try to start out with the Sailfly X, which is really great. Also, the Red Devil is okay in terms of quality control, uh, but the Red Devil, the Sailfly is really good, and also the full speed. But right now I'm using mostly the Sailfly, and I got the new Diatone Kebab uh, toothpick, which I'll be flying tomorrow as well. And tomorrow I'll be testing these in depth in obviously real world environment and try to get an idea. Obviously, the more time I put into it, the more information I gather, the better the research is. But I thought this was a great introduction. Let me know what you guys think down in the comment section. Check the links down below. Also, if you can support me on Patreon, that'd be super awesome. It'll enable me to get much better equipment to do these types of tests. And right now, I'll be working on some kind of a thrust stand for the toothpick class motors. And I really hope you guys enjoyed the video. Everything's linked down below. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace out, guys.